All right, let, let me ask you a, a question that many people have asked me. Okay. The question is, why the hell do, would anyone come to me for my services? Okay, why the hell? People say, look at your face, man. Look at, you, look at your face. Uh, who the hell in their right mind would come to a half-naked guy or guy with tattoos or school dropout or someone who has done all the crap in his life? And, and that's a very valid question. Who would come to me and why would they come to me? Okay. Have you ever asked this question and not had a response? Yeah, you can come out with some vague statements like, ah, people are dumb, man. People are stupid. And there also you're right. There are a lot of people who are stupid on this planet. I mean, there are literally people who pay <laughs> foreigners to heal their chakras with the Indian tantric. They call it tantric music. Some bhajan of some temple, they will play, put some Hindu gods, put a saffron powder here and dress up like a, like a monk and they go to them for healing. So people like that are there. I mean, there are still fans for Jay Shetty who consider him a guru. There are still people who admire Zakir Naik who consider him God's messenger. So there are people who are stupid. In, in fact, here on this island, or not on this island, uh, Kotao, you can search. There are people who are millions, actual millions, who come down to do tantric sexual dances or sexual some uh, massage or to heal diseases. <laughs> and there are some like free, free hippie culture. They will dance, ah, they'll go like this. And they'll dance naked and they'll say the nature's energy. There are even people who sleep naked and open their rear end to the sun to say that the rays are healing them, uh, healing their cancer. So the point I'm trying to make here is, yes, there are people who are dumb, 100%. But that doesn't make you intelligent. <laughs> Just because they are dumb doesn't by default make you smart. You also have certain dumbness in certain areas. We all do. So coming back to the question, why the hell would someone pay me? Why? <sighs> then there are, yeah, these other theories. He's very good at conning people, cheating people. Okay. If that was the case, shouldn't, given the fact that I've been online for now, for 20 years, don't you think there should, should have been reports about me online somewhere that he is a fraud, a cheater? People make all these claims. Because I have shared my own story, people make these tall claims. He's a what? A mafia member. He's a drug addict. He was involved with the cyber crime of UAE. He got deported. He got jailed. He, uh, they, they'll make, you know, if I tell them A, B, C, D, they'll put so many words and sentences and they'll make it totally something else. Like instead of saying 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 1 is 7,684, they'll make it. So, and the best part is people write under my videos about me <laughs> to me I know who you are you got jailed ah, you were deported you <laughs> so I write I respond please tell me more about me because you know more about me than I know myself go ahead I'm listening so let's let's focus on why do people pay now if I were to give you the answer and say personal branding you'll be ah, sh ah come on lawyer I expected but just be patient. I'll tell you specifically what I mean. And the theme personal branding, yes, it is my practice. It is what I do, but I'll tell you how. Now, first question, let me ask you. Okay, you saw me, right? Whether you like me or whether you hate me, you saw me. You'll never forget me, right? Why? Because I don't look like that normal, this thing. Just like when you see someone who has you know, there are these body modifiers who have chopped their nose, put metal teeth and split their tongue and cut off their ears or piercings. You never forget such a weird creature. Same way people look at me, hey, what the hell? They never forget. Like, it's like a Mike Tyson tattoo. All other boxers have no tattoo. Mike Tyson has one. So now that doesn't mean that people pay me because of my tattoos. If that is the case, I didn't have to make any videos. Or I could just make videos of showing my tattoos, like girls make Instagram videos showing their 
boobies and their butt, shake it, you'll get enough and more people paying. But that's not the reason why people pay me. People pay me for consulting, personal branding, coaching, resume, you know, all the services, okay. But then again, it doesn't answer the question, why? Am I the best in the world? Well, if I was the best in the world, then I would charge you the best rates in the world. Okay, I would have charged you something that is maybe like Tony Robbins, one million US dollars per meeting or 10 million US dollars for the year. So I'm not the best in the world. Just as the salary you're getting is not the highest in the world, the income I'm making is not the highest in the world. Okay. So now you're also earning a fixed income. You also, you know, want to earn more. So now what? I know, you must be thinking, why is he dragging this way? Why doesn't he just say, I need to make you understand. Because if I say it in one line, you'll know. So first is, I stand out visually. Do you stand out visually? Obviously, you can't tattoo yourself, right? Okay. Then what can you do? Dress in a particular way, look in a particular way. Have you seen people who like to say, I'm in the creative industry, I'm in the marketing, or I'm in the, I'm a marketing person, branding person. They will put all these names. And have you noticed that they'll normally have yellow glasses or green glasses? There'll be no frame. They'll just be the glasses. Why? Because they want to show, I'm a creative guy. So if you do something that's obnoxious, like this fashion, fashion catwalk, You'll see even people carrying each other upside down or their trousers fallen down. They call it creative creativity or creativeness. Okay. So how do you stand out? Are you going to dress up in pink or uh, wear something obnoxious like these celebrity stars wear? Well, if you do that, your boss might throw you out of the company. But you need to stand out, right? And that is where ladies are smarter than gents. Where guys have very limited options what to wear. Ladies can wear red, full, they can wear black and a theme. They can use, you know, different themes, different colors, but men can't. So my first challenge to you is visually, how do you stand out? Okay, you need to stand out. If you don't stand out, nothing. So that can imply maybe physically you can try to look attractive. But if you don't look attractive, you look ugly or you're fat or you're overweight. Or, then the next thing is use your uniqueness to look better, to captivate people's attention. Like I said, this is not the best idea, but that time it did look like one. But given my personality, given my controversy, given my brand essence, visually it's fine, but you can't do that. Second one is what do you offer? Let's say people got your attention. People found you interested, but then they're like, what do you offer, man? What do you do? You will ask me, what do you do? What are your services? And I know exactly what I'm good at. I know exactly where I stand. Now pay attention, huh? This is very, very important. If you need, take a pen and paper or paper and pencil and write this down because it's very important. I know exactly what I do or what I offer. I know exactly how good I am in comparison to the market or the competition. I know exactly how much to charge for 20 minutes, one hour, one day, one week, one month, three months, six months, one year. I know exact amounts. I know my target market exactly what age, which gender, which country. Do you know all this? Wait, you'll just have to wait until this guy moves because he'll make noise. One second. So I was saying, do you know your target market? Is it men or women? Is it 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60? Which age group? Do you know which part of the world they are staying? Do you know how much money are they earning that they can shell out to spend for you? Do you, all, do you know all this? Because if you don't know, then what are you doing, man? Like for example, even when applying for a job, if you're applying for India, you need to brand yourself differently. If you're applying in 
the Middle East, it should be different. If you're applying for Canada, it should be different. The same thing you do should be worded differently, should be presented differently. The layout, the structure, the language, the manner in which you do it. It will not make sense to you unless you have experience in this avenue and area. Okay? <coughs> Why do you think I only focus in the Middle East market with Indians? Why? Because I have experience with them. I was like them. I've done my research. I've done my due diligence. I've given my blood, like this, you know, blood, sweat and tears, the equity. We spent so much time in it that, in fact, you might not know this. If I see a resume, okay, resume is the most basic service I provide, the cheapest. If I see a resume in seconds, seconds, not even minutes, I can tell you what is wrong, where it's wrong, why it's wrong. Seriously. Because I've been doing day in and out. It's like going to a car mechanic. You are looking at everywhere, every connection, uh, every part of the automobile. You can't make out what is wrong where. But the car mechanic, he'll just look at it. He might get it immediately. He'll just tell you, start the engine. And in seconds, in seconds, he'll tell you what is wrong where. Seconds. And where you are struggling for hours and days and weeks and sometimes you didn't even know if there was a problem, they can check it out in seconds. So I've been doing my craft, I've been practicing my craft for uh, 20 years, yeah, come on. So I have that and I know whom to target. Why do you think I'm not targeting someone who is, let's say, French or someone who is an Australian citizen staying in Australia or a German. Why am I not targeting someone from Russia? Not just for the language, because different people have different requirements. But the Dubai or the Middle East or UAE? Oh, seconds. All right. Now, next one. See, Saudi, Qatar, Bahrain, Oman. These places have very similar characteristics. But if you notice, I always focus on Dubai, UAE, because that is where I was. So the next point is the number of years, the expertise, the sweat equity, and the self-education, the self-investment. I've had mentors, I've gone for coaching classes, I've gone for seminars, I've bought DVDs, VCDs, MP3s, I listen to podcasts, I listen to educational programs every day. Before I used to listen to it for eight hours a day, I was so obsessed. So I've mastered my craft, right? And it doesn't end, I still do it. I still don't stop. So do you do that? Is my question to you. No. And then apart from that, okay, let's move. The next one is, the next one is even more important. Do you know how to sell yourself? In the written word, in the visual medium, the websites or whatever, the videos that you create, if you notice, my style is very different. In the way you speak, the way you talk, the way you communicate, do you really know how to sell yourself? Like, can you sell yourself 7 seconds, 30 seconds, 1 minute, 3 minutes, 7 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes? I have the scripts for each one. 7 second script, 30 second script, 1 minute, uh, three minutes, seven minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. I have the scripts for all of them. You, uh, it comes with practice. I refined it over the years, so much so that it's very hard to tweak it anymore. I'm that good. Then comes the next part. Once you know how to sell yourself, once you know how to market yourself, once you know how to charge whatever it is you're worth, here comes the last and final question. How much time, effort, money do you spend on yourself? Anything, whether it's marketing yourself, selling yourself, talking about yourself. You see, every day I put three videos online and I don't, <laughs> you see my previous video, I've told you clearly, I don't get paid big money for it. I don't do it for the money. In fact, if I get zero also, I'll still do it. You know why? Not, not because I'm so great and almighty. Money does help, 
any amount. But why do I do that? Is because the more I grind, the more I put my blood, sweat and tears, you know, the more I stand out, the more people will notice me. So even if I, I get even one subscriber per day, for example, that's the lowest. So even if I get zero views like this video, even if it is not popular, it's not viral, there's no entertainment. It is my subject matter. And whether I feel good, whether I feel bad, whether I'm in mood, not in mood, I feel sick, I'm not feeling sick, I feel well, I feel hyper, I feel anything. My everyday routine, I will publish my work. I will post the video, I will write the article, I will answer the comment, I will respond to the email. Because it's my brand, it's for me. So when you put all this together, because I know the direction where I'm moving, I know my plus points, I know my weaknesses, I know myself. Why do you think people will not pay? And if you work hard consistently every single day, giving your heart and soul, you think you'll not succeed? I work on myself. I don't work on a company or their product. I work on myself more. Do you do the same? I'll tell you, if, if you were to put the kind of effort that I'm putting, you would succeed maybe a hundred times more. And then you would never ask me this question. That is why there's a difference between an athlete, an artist, a businessman, and an anonymous keyboard warrior, or an employee-minded simpleton. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Good, bad, ugly. Love to hear from you. You guys take care. Chill.